Hey guys, take it now. Last week I showed you guys the AKG K160. Well, this week let's add another 100 to it and talk about the K260, which is uh, uh, quite a different headphone from the K160. I mean, they're they're polar opposites to be honest, but you know, uh, it is the K260, and uh, let's talk about it. This headphone was launched <coughs> in 1989, so that's still a long time ago. I mean, if you think about it, it's it's not a uh, you know modern headphone it's still an old headphone and and this headphone has a very fascinating uh, history as, as well as a fascinating fascinating technical history behind it and you might think this is just another vintage but this has quite a good story behind it and, I, and i'll talk about that further in the video so let's talk about the k260 now the k260 was supposed to be the the successor to the much famed much uh, loved k240 which you know we're all fans of we love the k240 and you know at that time K240 was the best AKG uh, best seller, you know, uh, by AKG in the headphone department. So the K260 was something AKG was hoping would be the successor to the K240 and would, you know, catch up and become as successful as the K240. But that did not work out, unfortunately. And the K260 uh, was probably one of the most, uh, you know, failed AKG headphones ever made. Uh, just to give you guys a, a, a taste of how badly this headphone failed, this is the second generation of this headphone. There was a there was a first generation which was just the K260. I have the K260 Professional. Professional is the second generation, as they say, and uh, the K260, the original one, they, they hardly ran for one year in the production. So, <coughs> a, a very small, short run. Uh, and the K260 Professional. I don't know why they would. I mean, it's it's pretty much the same headphone. There is absolutely no difference between them but AKG decided to launch another one and call it professional so I, I don't know I don't understand the reason behind that but the K260 in my opinion is, is a very overlooked headphone because you know it has a, a very fascinating engineering history behind it now uh, I don't I don't know how much you guys will understand so I, I, want, I want to keep it as simple as possible but you know headphone measurements and headphone you know development back in the 80s back in the 70s was was very almost uh, you can say it was just trial and error there was no objective way to measure headphones back in that day i mean even speaker measurements i'm not talking about frequency response i'm just talking about other distortion measure measurements and other you know mechanical measurements that come when you design a transducer so you know back in the day when akg was designing this headphone speaker objective measurements and you know a lot of rub and buzz every all kinds of stuff was happening back in that day and akg before Harman invested in in these measurement techniques, invested in these measurement uh, instruments to create their headphones in 1989, approximately, maybe before that. Now, if you read, if you're an AES member, I am, but uh, you need you, you need to be a member to you know access these these uh, these uh, technical uh, papers. But if you're interested, PM me and I'll find them. I, I have it, I have them in my archive. But I read a paper somewhere that and in that the AKG K260 was used. And this was 1980. 89, 1990, uh, 1988, something like that, where AKG employed a proper lumped parameter model, and it's probably the first uh, headphone I think to employ a lumped parameter model uh, and do proper testing. Now, lumped parameter modeling is, is pretty common practice in speaker design. Everybody does it, but in headphones, it's still even now it's it's not everybody does it. Apart from you know big manufacturers like Biodynamic, uh, Sennheiser. You know the people who these companies the engineers know what they're doing and and they employ these parameters in designing a headphone but uh, you know these small companies they don't know what they're doing they just anybody can make a transducer but designing and objectively measuring everything and making sure everything is just perfect only few companies and only brilliant engineers can do it and AKG did, did this in 1989 which is you know an example of, of just how amazing AKG was and far ahead of its time so the K260 you know does sound like it was measured does sound like it was optimized to sound marvelous and that's exactly what it is in my opinion the k260 apart from the frequency response corrections is probably the most well-behaved transducer i have ever heard in my life in fact the the detail and the overall fidelity coming out of this headphone I had to compare it against my Stax Lambda. That's how good the, the K260 is. There were some songs in which the detail was just so marvelous and so well there that I had to bust out my Lambdas and you know compare it against probably the the, the best headphone, in, best measuring headphone to be ever made by man. You know, so the you know the K260, you know, definitely has 
a, a fantastic detailed retrieval i mean it's 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 unparalleled in my opinion as far as dynamic headphones in this type go but again you know not pe- many people will be able to you know distinguish these features because you need to have a you know background knowledge on what people are doing what headphones are what sound is other than uh, uh, you know otherwise you will never be able to appreciate a headphone for what it is you will just notice the frequency response nothing more than that and you know frequency response especially in this chamber design and this coupling nature there is nothing you can do about it so it's always going to be variable a lot of external factors are going to be there so you know i don't know i don't know but overall the gato 60 so- sounds absolutely amazing that's uh, thanks to the uh, marvelous engineering gone behind it back in the 80s you know where nobody was doing it so Kero 60 absolutely fascinating in my opinion in terms of sound now in terms of build and stuff it, in my opinion the Kero 40 of the times like the monitor and stuff definitely do feel better i mean the Kero 60 there is nothing wrong about it uh, it it feels okay it doesn't feel like a success it just feels like just another AKG Kero K2 series you know there's just nothing special about it if they had you know gone a step ahead and improved the build quality and make it look like a Kero 40 upgrade probably it would have you know become a success but uh, just looking at it just feeling it 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 doesn't feel like in Kero 40 upgrade it just feels like another AKG and that's probably one of the big reasons it never you know caught up now in terms of modding i, I did put a, a dual entry ips as well as brain waves uh, pleather pads uh, exceptional comfort i mean uh, you know this headphone with the brain waves pads you know it's everybody knows the brain waves pads but you know with Kero 40s and the Kero 60s these pads and the comfort just goes up to a level you will not believe you know it is really comfortable weight distribution is amazing thanks to the headband and overall you know just a very very nice vintage headphone i think uh, a very overlooked headphone now the good thing about the Kero 60 is that if you cannot find uh, the Kero 60 on you on classifieds which is pretty uncommon these these are i mean uh, pretty rare headphones i don't see them that often but uh maybe you can maybe you can but if you don't see them there is also a philips oem which is i think as the name is sbc3178 which is exactly like the kero 60 slightly different design i i'm i'm pretty sure they should sound pretty identical i mean the chamber is a bit different so i don't know how that would impact the frequency response but the overall fidelity and stuff should be the same because it's an oem it's the same headphone so So the Kero 60 you can say you know it's probably the most misunderstood headphone more than misunderstood just no, never came in the limelight nobody knows about this headphone and nobody knows the engineering history behind this headphone so i think it's a very significant headphone for any headphone enthusiast for any AKG enthusiast i think it's a headphone worth having in the collection and i, I really like it so i'll see you guys next time with more vintage headphones take it easy and like always have a good one <laughs>